This is the plaintiff, Marlene Virtus. She says the defendant asked her to be one of her bridesmaids, and she spent money on the dress and contributed to the bachelorette party. Then the defendant abruptly told her she no longer wanted her as one of her bridesmaids, and now refuses to reimburse her for the money she already spent. Some people. She's suing for $476, the amount she wasted. This is the defendant, Worlene Raymond. She says the plaintiff didn't follow her rules for being a bridesmaid, like showing up for fittings and appointments and being on time. She can't understand why the plaintiff is suing her for the bridesmaid dress when she never even picked it up. The defendant says this whole thing has put a real damper on their friendship, and she doesn't feel she owes the plaintiff a thing. She's accused of causing some wedding day blues. All parties, please use your right hands. Welcome back to the People's Court. Next case on the docket, the plaintiff says she was asked to be a bridesmaid by the defendant, bought a dress, uh, but was kicked out of the wedding, and now she wants her money back for the dress. The defendant says the plaintiff didn't follow her rules for being a bridesmaid, so she disinvited her and owes nothing. It's the case of missing the markle. Thank you, Douglas. You're welcome. All right, Ms. Virtus, you are suing your former friend, Ms. Raymond, for $476 that you say she owes you and refuses to repay. Tell me what happened. Yes, um, on December 7th, 2019, I was asked to be a bridesmaid at uh, Orlean and Jerry's wedding. Um, I, of course, accepted. How did you um, two know each other? We've known each other for years, started out um, with the National Guard. We were in the National Guard for a little bit together. Um, and then after that, college, and then after college as well, we, okay. we kept in contact. All right, so go on. Um, and so start, uh, planning started around September 2020, um, and that's when uh, I was asked to make a payment of about $200 for uh, the dress as well as uh, the petticoat. Um, and then after that, there were other expenses start, uh, such as hair, trips, um, makeup deposits, all of those. Uh, all of those money were sent over uh, under the pretense that I was going to be a bridesmaid. So and there's $200 for the bridesmaid's dress, 126 for an Airbnb reservation. Was that for just because of the wedding or did that have something to do with the bridal party? It was specifically for the bridal party. Okay. Uh, and then $150 for a bachelorette party trip. Tell me about that. Yes. So I was unable to to make the um, trip at the time they were planning it. So then, um, you know, what the maid of honors came up with, if you're not going to attend, then, you know, this is how much you can contribute in, or in order to offset um, Warlane's contributions as well. Uh, because this was her uh, trip and all of us were contributing. And okay. Some Who's fashion. us? Uh, is it everybody invited to the bachelorette party or the bridesmaids? The bridesmaids, the maid of honors. It was the bridal party from my understanding. So just the bridal party was at the bachelorette party? I'm not 100% sure, but I, but I believe so. All right. So what happens? You know, after, I believe it was July... 21st, where Warlane sent me a text message and asked and basically told me I was no longer a part of the bridal party. Right, but did and you so, did you ask her why? Like this is a weird text. I the the message that she sent was extremely vague. She made assumptions about things that had been going on um, in my life. There were no questions asked, and so I really didn't want to stress her out even more. So I kind of said okay. And then after, it wasn't until after the wedding took place that I kind of addressed the whole, um, you know, situation regarding the deposit. Huh, and now, the I don't understand people. If, so, if I was a bridesmaid and some bride sent me a text that said, you're no longer a bridesmaid, I'd be picking up the phone and saying, what the hell? Right. Like, no, what no happened? Doubt, no if you're close enough to be a bridesmaid, you're close enough right. to pick up the phone and say, and why are you texting her that she's no longer a bridesmaid? What is it that happened, Ms. Raymond? Um, so, Your Honor, Marlene did not come to anything 
for rehearsals. Like before I, pro I proposed to my entire bridal party, we bought gifts, we brought them to a restaurant, we gave them mini scrolls, we just tried to make it feel special for them. And I'm very particular in the sense of I send dates, deadlines, times, like I'm but all dates, about that dates, deadlines, times aspect. for what? Because rehearsals just, don't happen a year beforehand. So I'm trying to... No, the rehearsals started in June. When was the wedding in 2021? September 5th. Okay, what is it you have to rehearse from June mm -hmm. to September? I'm kind of curious. I had a wedding party of 50 people. Five zero? 50, yes, Your Honor. You had 50 bridesmaids and, and uh, groomsmen? I had an old English theme. Um, so it was princesses, um, princes, kings, queens, um, flower maidens, um, handmaidens, bridesmaids, um, just a list of different hierarchical Okay, all things. right, so yeah. you are exclusively requested to be a badio maid. Agreeing to such position requires both financial and mental support. Failure to abide by the rules set forth will result in a violation of Article 9, Chapter 5.21. The penalties can include a fine of $100, banishment from the empire, and death. All right, so, so talk to me. Obviously, this was kind of a joke, um, but what made you tell her you're no longer my bridesmaid? It started in um, November 2020. We were setting up dates um, for the bridal party's dresses, and I was texting her. You mean for fittings? For yeah, for, no, just to pick out the, yeah, for fittings. Okay. Um, so I was texting her, calling her, nothing. And I got upset, and I sent a text message um, to my bridal party. I'm like, hey, I don't think I want Marlene in the wedding anymore. Like, I've been trying to get in contact with her. Um, so I reached out to Marlene again, and like after, I want to say a week or two, she responded and say, hey, I've been having issues with my phone, um, and for some reason I'm not getting notifications um, on my phone. I'm like, okay, Mel, but like you have to learn how to communicate because there's like a lot of information. Did you ever call out. her or no? I did. I did call her. And she didn't, nothing. and did you leave messages? Um, no, I did not leave messages. Yeah, your, your generation just doesn't, how old are you? I'm 27. Yeah, like, if only they would invent a way where we could speak simultaneously <laughs> rather than send each other messages that we have to wait for an answer. Um, and Your Honor, Yeah, you didn't buy people... that she was having pro phone problems. You just thought she was just not into it. Not responding. Right. She has her read receipts on, too, Your Honor. Oh, so my when, goodness. When so you could reads... see that she read it? Yes. Okay. You well, see that. Anybody we'll out that. there within the sound of my voice, <laughs> if you have read receipts on, you best be responding to your messages. Wow. Okay. So you could tell she was reading it and just not answering you. Yes, Your Honor. All right. So but... then she writes back or texts back or something and says, I'm sorry, I've had phone problems. And then what happened? She told me to calm down because Again, I'm good with, I'm all about dates and things, and when things aren't going a certain way, I start to freak out. So she's like, we're laying, calm down. Like, I'm sorry. Not, nothing nothing gets me to calm down more when I'm nervous <laughs> than someone right. telling me to calm down. Doesn't work. No. I just told you to calm so down, Your Honor. I, I told her, okay, fine. Like, here's what we're going to be doing for makeup. Here's the dates that we're going to have the fitting. All right, but she now, did send did, the payments in. So what else was the problem? She didn't show up to anything so there was a mandatory bridal party um meeting where okay. we did all everything that we needed to do financially so I, we did a whole powerpoint okay and she didn't attend that she didn't attend that and she didn't attend that why what reason did she give you um she said that she wasn't going, going to be in town she was going to be in florida okay so then what else didn't she do she didn't attend so we had a green shower um so she's suing me for what's a green shower so a green shower is like a wedding shower, but because my husband and I, we bought our home um, in early 2020, it's fully furnished. We didn't want people giving us gifts of like things that would bring into our home. So we just said cash only. Oh, oh, um, that so kind of green. I thought it was sustainability green. All right, so mm. <laughs> real green. All right, so you did a green shower and? Yes, and the bridal party came, they set it up. It was a surprise to me. Um, I was told that Marlene did not show to help out for that. Okay, did all. she show for the party? She showed for the party. All right, so go on. Um, and then we had mandatory rehearsals. We texted, I texted Marlene. I but what, her. what were you rehearsing? Just walking in or is there a big how, dance how, or how, what? How to walk in, a dance, like. Oh, there was a dance. So they had to learn the dance. dance and, okay. They had to learn the dance, how to walk in. There was okay. a special way of walking in, okay. not your traditional okay, walk that's, in. Okay, that's what I'm asking. And how, how did you have them walk in? Um, okay, so there was like steps to it. 
And so they would step, 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 come apart, do a little twirl. Um, the guy would bow and kiss the girl's arm. The girl would go around gotcha. and they would come together. Yeah. Okay. All right. So, and did she not, so she didn't go to the one in June? She didn't go to any rehearsals. Okay. And did she give you a reason for not going to rehearsals? So the last rehearsal before I sent that text message, she said, I'm sorry I didn't overnight. Um, but she sent it at the time of the rehearsal. Yeah. What's an overnight, Ms. Like, Verdes? She worked overnight. Um, at the time, Your Honor, I was working um, multiple jobs, and one of them was an overnight okay. shift. Okay. But so did you miss every rehearsal? Your Honor, I was notified of only one rehearsal, Your Honor, and... Um, I was, I actually texted her and I told her because I was driving that, I, um, that I'm actually on my way. And then she sent out a text message saying, if you're not here by now, then out of respect for me, then don't show up. And how are people notified of the rehearsal? We have a group chat um, that I'm blowing up. We were texting and texting and texting. And I was like, everybody has to thumbs up this. And like anybody who didn't, I would reach out to them separately. Um, and I mean, so, she knew. so I live. All right. Yes. So here's where we are. You have a situation where you're not feeling the love and you don't want her to be your bridesmaid. And, you know, it's your wedding. You can decide whatever you want. The issue I now have is she's out a certain amount of money because she was supposed to be a bridesmaid. And then you decided that she wouldn't be a bridesmaid. Your Honor, her dress got delivered late February at my house. I texted Marlene March 28th saying, by the way, your dress is here. Never picked up the dress, Your Honor. No, I know. Never picked up the dress. No fitting, nothing. Dress is still here. Yeah, but why do you text her? Why don't you just pick up the phone and call her and tell her, hey, you're slacking on the job. Do you not want to do this? Like, how come you guys don't just communicate? Welcome back to the People's Court. I'm Harvey Levin. Plaintiff says that she contributed a lot to the defendant's wedding, and now she wants money for it. The defendant says... They are friends no more over this silly thing, but she doesn't feel she owes the plaintiff anything. Let's see what the judge has to say. This is not the first time where I was like, okay, Mel, we have to communicate. Like, I've, it's not that, oh, we're talking only about the wedding. Like, me and Mel, we had a friendship. So we would be FaceTiming and calling about other things, too. And I would bring up the wedding, like, hey, Mel, like, make sure, like, you're on it. Like, you have to be communicating and let me know these things in advance because I'm actually spending money on food. Like, that morning, I was so upset, Your Honor, because I went out there and made a whole brunch breakfast, prepared it, and literally catered to them. And I, the night before, I was like, make sure you guys are on time. You need to be on time because once one person's there, their partner can't practice. Right. And, like... It was the time of the rehearsal. You're going to tell me that you had an over overnight. Like, you could have communicated that yeah. beforehand. Yeah, I have no issue with your decision. It's your decision. No one can have an issue with your decision. And I hear the things you're saying. The only issue is, does she then get money that she invested because she was supposed to be a bridesmaid back? That's so the issue. And you, you seem to be under the impression that if she breaches her responsibilities, then she knew she'd be fired, and so this is on her. I, can't, I think that's no, your... That, no, 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 Your Honor. So the dress, she could have picked up and returned. And, she but never she, picked it up. She can't pick it up and return it now, right? Did someone else no, wear she, it? No, Your Honor. The dress is still here. And why do you say someone else wore it, Ms. Virtus? Because I was at the wedding, Your Honor. Yeah, but how do you know and that's I your dress? Because when I was doing the um, fitting with the other girls, the person that wore the dress at the wedding, she wasn't there. She wasn't a bridesmaid originally. Did and that I, person and I, get their yeah. own dress? Yes, Your Honor. So she didn't wear that dress. No, Your Honor. Is it she still? Is actually... her? Is the plaintiff's dress? Is the plaintiff's dress still in the pla her medically sealed plastic? Yes, Your Honor. Yes, so it hasn't been opened. No, Your Honor. Okay. And Your Honor, I would just like to point out the fact that. The 150 for the bachelorette, that was a surprise to me. I didn't know about the money until Mel sent me that statement in the mail. Like, that was a whole surprise. I'm like, what is she talking about, the 150? I reached out to my maid of honors, and they were like, yeah, here are the people that donated to your bachelorette. At that um, point, had your, bachelor your bachelorette had already happened, because at that point, you had already been married, right? Yes, Your Honor. Right. What about the Airbnb reservation? So the Airbnb, I was throwing a party at the Airbnb the night before the wedding. 
Um, well, why but, wouldn't she get that back if you if you fired her from the wedding party? I, I, I split the cost. So it was for the bridal party. I yes, I know. The and cost. then you and then you told her you can't use the Airbnb you paid for. On I did what not theory? Tell her that. Well, yeah, you fired her. It's for the bridal party, but and you no, and you told her she it, wasn't a bridesmaid anymore. That, that's what I'm trying to explain. It wasn't exclusively for the bridal party, Your Honor. The bridal party could stay there, but it was for a party for people who were coming the night before for the wedding. I'm sorry. It's Just an like, Airbnb. It's a place to sleep. And she's not welcome to sleep there because she's not part of the bridal party. Is, are there any texts between the two of you regarding the dress? Yes, they are, Your Honor. So Mel reached out. She said that if she could return the dress and get a, a refund, I said, yes, she can. And so mm -hmm. why don't you then go, I see those texts where you go back and forth on the topic. Why don't you just go pick up a dress and return it? That was always a, a, a scheduling issue, Your Honor. With who? And so, with Worlane, so much so that I actually texted um, uh, Jerry, which is her uh, husband, and I didn't get a, a response regarding the uh, dress. So I would check in periodically. Are you home? When can I pick up the dress? And what? And so they wouldn't answer you? Or they would answer you and then you wouldn't go? Which is it? There was never a good time for me to go and pick it up. So I would ask I don't know why. There's a, you know, listen, 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 listen. How many people were invited to this wedding, Ms. Raymond? Um, 260 people. So it was going to be a good party where a lot of people from college were going to be there. It was going to be a lot of fun. And you found the time to go to the wedding. But you can't find the time to go to rehearsal. You can't find the time to pick up the dress. I mean... It uh, wasn't my schedule, Your Honor. Why didn't you just mail the dress to her? Your Honor, I, I honestly, I did not think of that one. And even with that question, Merle was never able to answer text messages. Okay, in, in March, there is discussion that it's at your house. September 1st, four days before the wedding. Hey, you're going to be home tomorrow morning. Can I swing by and pick up the dress? Hey, girl, received your letter. Thought we were close enough to discuss via phone instead of getting an invoice. So you fired her by text as a bridesmaid, but you're offended that she sends you an invoice by, by letter. So the text message is really um, July 21st, Your Honor. She says, I'll pick up the dress either this weekend or next so I can return it. Let me know what day works for you. I said, next weekend is better. She said, is it refundable, right? Do you know? I said, it should be. The package hasn't been opened. She had not responded until that September 1st date. What happened between those two dates, Ms. Virtus? I was actually waiting for her to tell me what day next weekend. Okay, she, I, was... I know, but what did you do to get, you know what, we're done. All right, regarding the bridesmaid's dress, Ms. Raymond, we're going to make arrangements for you to mail that uh, through Officer McIntosh for you to mail an unopened bridesmaid's dress. Let me recommend that you take video and pictures that prove that it's unopened. OK, before yes, you mail it. All right. Because if it is open, then she can't return it. And then I have to reconsider my ruling. But I'm basing it on your word that it is unopened. Regarding the Airbnb reservation, I don't think that she, anybody in their right mind would think that they are able to stay with the wedding party when they've been fired as a bridesmaid. So I think that she should get that back. And I am going to order a judgment in her favor in, amount, in the amount of the 126. Regarding the bachelorette party, that's a contribution to a party that I'm sure people other than the bridesmaids were attending. And there's, if you can't attend it, you can't attend it. But from the beginning, you couldn't attend the bachelorette party. You don't attend the rehearsals. You don't attend. I mean, I, I happen to think that Ms. Raymond is rather demanding. Demanding, okay, but by the same token, there is a minimum standard to a bridesmaid on what they have to do. And if you're too busy to show up on time and too busy, I'm kind of not surprised that, you know, especially in a case like this, you know her, you know the, the extravaganza she was putting on. It's her wedding, it's her way, and that's what she wanted. And so she has a right to say, you know what, this isn't working out. But I, I also think that Ms. Virtus has a right to the Airbnb money back and the dress that she paid for. That's my, not the bachelorette party. That's my verdict. Good luck, folks. So the judge orders the plaintiff to get uh, $126. The dress has to go back. Do you think the store will take it back? It's been a year. Not necessarily take it back, but as long as I can sell it as new, then I'm perfectly fine with that. I have no problem. Oh, you would do that? Oh, that's interesting. Oh, All absolutely. right. Let me ask you something else. What was it like to go to the wedding having been disinvited to be a bridesmaid? What was that like? I'm surprised you went. I'm surprised I went too, to be honest, but I figured this was my friend. They were both my friends, um, so I just wanted to be there and support them. Um, but it was tense, um, if I'm being honest.
And how about your friendship now? Do you still have a friendship with uh, with Ms. Raymond, or is it kind of over? We're not in communication, so I would say it's over. Yeah, I'm not surprised. Not surprised at all. All right. Well, I guess you did the right thing by filing the lawsuit to get what money you did. And good luck with the dress. Ms. Raymond, let me ask you something. We, the one thing we didn't hear about was, number one, how was the wedding? It was amazing. I had a good time. I think everybody had a good time. All right. You're not you're not upset that the friendship is over, I guess, at this point, are you? I'm not. Um, just because I felt like it escalated. I mean, again, if if I'm your friend, I text you like, hey, I don't want you in the wedding. Wouldn't you call me? Wouldn't yeah. you say what's up? Like it was it was just as if like the whole time she just didn't care about anything. So why should I care? OK, very good. All right. So Doug, this is an interesting case. When a bride asks a bridesmaid to be in the wedding and go buy a dress, it's not technically a contract, but it can be interpreted that way. And that is the case here. Basically, you have a situation where the bridesmaid is saying, look, I relied on her. I went out and bought a dress and now I can't be in her wedding. I want my money back. But the reality is the bridesmaid breached the contract by not showing up for the rehearsal. So the bride had every right to say you're out of the wedding and I'm not gonna pay you for that dress. Did you ever have second thoughts about your legal career while you were in law school? And if so, what other fields were you considering? I didn't always know I wanted to be a lawyer. When I was in college, I thought I was gonna be, well, I was a psychology major and I thought I would be a therapist. Right. Uh, but I uh, quickly realized that I'm a much better talker than I am a listener, and uh -huh. <laughs> which is a really bad trait for a judge. But no, no, no. Um, and I, uh, I, I decided on law school. Once I decided on law school, I, I loved law school. Unlike a lot of other people, I really loved. So law you school. weren't like me. You weren't riddled with self doubt when you were in law school. No. About where well, am everybody I going has imposter sy syndrome when you right. get to graduate school. You're like, uh -huh. how did I get here? Um, it was some kind of accident that right. they let you in. Yes, it's yeah. a total <laughs> fluke. Uh, yeah. But no, I no, I loved it. I loved it. I loved every minute of it. Right. Well, the funny thing is, when I was in law school, I did think for a little while that I might pursue a different career. You know, my mom and dad were both police officers, so I thought about becoming an FBI agent, and actually went as far. Oh, as... You reek FBI agent. I that know. would have been a perfect job for you. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.